Welcome back to After Dark. I'm Nick Pegg. Joining me on the line now is Lisa Trigenza. Good evening to you. Good evening. Now, last week we talked about... What did we talk about last week? Could you remind me? <laughs> well, we were talking about um, connecting to our body and uh, how we can do that, uh, the different pathways, if you like. So, um, yeah, covered quite a bit, actually, last week. Yeah, that's why I needed you to paraphrase it for me. Uh, <laughs> now, this evening we're going to talk about pathways to stillness and calm within. Now, I'm very interested in the reason why we don't habitually have that in our lives anyway, stillness and calm. So um, why do you think it is? Our lives in, in this age that we're living, it's um, we, we are very busy. Like busy, busy has nearly become the... Uh, the the key phrase of when when we're asked how are we we're always busy and um we we are busy you know there's so much that we are doing that's taking up our time with work with family um there's, there's just always seems to be so much to be done and so by by being in a constant state of busyness you know the question is are we really connected to the present moment because we're always thinking about the next thing to do or the next place to be so that in itself brings up quite a lot of uh stress and anxiety and um so so it has this very um a very large knock-on effect to our health and our well-being let's have a little talk about not being in the moment Mm -hmm. um, I've got, um, well, they're older teenagers now and they're very um, connected to their devices, as am I, I might say. I mean, look, we do this program on Facebook and it's all based around that technology. And, um, I, you know, when families are together and they're not talking to each other because they're all gawping at a screen, I mean, it's, it's pretty bad really, isn't it? Yeah, it's not ideal. It's not ideal in terms of connecting to to the people that are around us, and it and it's very common. And um, and here we are, where we want to utilise devices because on one uh, one hand, it makes life easier for us and it allows us to do our job or to um, find information, uh, to share information, to be connected with those uh, who are further away from us in the world. However quite often the ones that are really in our physical presence, so like our family or um, those in our home and our close community, we, we may not be fully present with them because we are holding these devices in our hands or we're looking at screens. And it is a, a very um, major you know issue, really. Um, so, yeah, we do need to consider how we use devices in a conscious way. So it, it's all about balance in terms of being able to use them in a, in a productive way, but also being consciously present with those that are, are around you. See, it seems to me that worst case scenario, as a parent, you could lose a childhood because this daily behavior and, you know, the child becoming more and more withdrawn into their device and the parent actually doing the same thing and mm -hmm. and even worse than that, well, just as bad as that, you could lose a relationship as well or a marriage. Absolutely, absolutely. And and the thing is that with a device, and depending on how they they're using it, um, if it's a child and they're playing a game, it it's it's like a sugar fix. It's 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 so addictive in the sense that they're getting this instant reward if they're playing and they're winning and they're going up a level and. And um, and then they might uh, couch that by saying, oh, well, in this game I'm learning and there's an educational component and then the parent might think, oh, well, yeah, sure, okay. And in the meantime, the parent's thinking, oh, well, just quickly check those emails and see what friends are up to on Facebook. And before you know it, you've lost an hour and you haven't actually really checked in with your child and to see how they're really doing or what's going on at school. So, yeah, the time flies when you're having fun and when you're kind of getting a bit of a, a fix uh, from, from that connection to the device. Now, with the, um, the care and the, well, the service and education that you offer, at about <laughs> what age are people coming to you and saying, well, look, Lisa, I kind of need some help with this. I've, 
I recognize I've reached a stage in life where I, I'm, I'm losing something and then they come to you. What, what kind of age is it? So in, in regards to uh, like with their, with their journey of health and wellness in, in terms of adults, because Absolute, I do, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do work with children as well. But um, when we talk about adults, um, it, it can be at any age, if, if I was to say that. Um, what I find is um, when we get to say a middle age stage, uh, we may get to a point where we... Uh, just looking at our life we were at and, and what's ahead and and wanting to make the most of, of our health and wellness. Uh, so there's a conscious choice in that. Um, and and it may be that um, health in a, in a well-being sense, a full body sense, hasn't really been um, embraced as much. Uh, what I do find is, is some of the, you know, the younger generation are, are, are a little bit more connected in a way to um, environmental and social um, challenges so sometimes they do have a little bit more awareness around health and wellness from a holistic perspective. So in the time we've got left can you describe maybe a couple of the pathways to stillness and calm within? Sure. So well, there are a, a, a couple of, that I really find useful and um, if we think about our mindfulness so being in the present moment and by that I mean linking in to our senses so if we are uh, like we touched on before if, if you're with your family and you are actually sitting down and having a meal um, you know really thinking about what you're actually eating and um, so really enjoying it from the sense of taste and just being more conscious of, of what you're eating the experience the flavors and um and expressing that so so it, and it could be um a sense of um uh, uh um listening so sometimes when we're listening to music or we might have a lot going on or we we might be distracted visually if we actually cut out a, one of the senses so if we actually close our eyes and really just listen to the music we can be so much more present and be taken away in that moment in that sense so there's that element when we can be mindful just through our senses uh there's breathing techniques uh and then of course we can get into um more of the the yoga movement and conscious movement to get us to a place of stillness within so yeah a number of different techniques that can be utilized so sleep isn't necessarily stillness within is it <laughs> not necessarily no, no I, find I, mean, it it's quite a I find it quite yeah. a turmoil at the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean sleep is absolutely essential to our health and it's always good to to have a really good night's sleep but when we talk or when i talk about stillness and calm and peace it is about how we carry ourselves and hold ourselves in our daily life and by doing that and being connected to ourselves to our own feelings to um to to a, a good place within we 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 radiate that for those around us and um and then you do actually find that, that it will generate a really good uh, deep calm sleep for you as well so it, it does have benefits in that way i'm interested in why in our culture when i say our culture i'm mm. talking about kind of western european white sort of culture um i mean in certain other cultures like the indian or vedic cultures they clearly place so much importance on this side of spiritualism you know of calm and meditation but mm -hmm. in our kind of christian world if you like and there doesn't seem to be i mean sure prayer is important and but we don't seem to have this emphasis on calm and inner peace and it's kind of weird where so many other cultures do mm, absolutely absolutely and i think that's why we are looking to those cultures to embrace some of these practices because we do see it working. And for whatever reason in our culture that just hasn't come through the same. Um, and 
uh, whilst whilst we have um, certain songs or music in different uh, religions, and, and in that sense, it's um, it, it's used in different ways. And I think the beautiful way that it, we bring it in, even with um, kirtan and, and yoga, for example, it's very much about just um, creating unity, bringing people together, being calm, being in the moment, being present. So it's not necessarily about the words being said. It's, it's again, it's about being present. So, yeah, I mean... We're, we're fortunate that we are now seeing the benefits of those practices and we're bringing them more into our, our daily lives. We had a, um, a candidate on, Anne Galloway, earlier and she was talking about children and she, she feels that um, basic civics should be taught in schools and it seems by talking to you that um, the idea of, of finding calm and peace and methods for doing that, that wouldn't be a mess in schools either. Correct, absolutely. I would love to see mindfulness and yoga being practised in every school. Uh, I just think the earlier that our students are exposed to these techniques and strategies, the more that they have in their own toolbox to deal with life's challenges. So, um, you know, I see these beautiful videos that pop up every now and then of, of really young children practicing uh, in other countries. And, and it, it, that's where it starts. If we can start with that beautiful practice of uh, mindfulness and calm and connecting to self and, um, you know, these different techniques, breathing techniques, then it just becomes our norm and, and we have this beautiful ripple effect of, of calm and peace throughout society. Well, Lisa Dragenza, great that we had a much better line this week. Um, sorry about the poor yes. quality last week. <laughs> But um, we very much look forward to speaking with you again. And thanks for joining Thank us you. here on After Dark this week to have a chat about, amongst other things, pathways to stillness and calm. Thank you.